Hi, I'm Leonie from Spines and Splines. Today I'm going to show you how to turn an old juice or milk carton into a dry point print. Dry points are kind of intaglio printing, but it's one that you can do safely and easily at home. Traditionally, dry point has been done on a metal plate like copper, but it's also possible to make dry point plates using cardboard. Milk and juice cartons make the perfect material for dry point, as they're already coated with a substance that makes them waterproof, so you don't need to seal them before you print. I began making my plate by slicing off one of the panels with a utility knife, a cutting mat and a ruler, and I chose to cut the folds in the carton off for the particular print that I'm making. But these will pick up ink in a really interesting way, so if you want to incorporate them into your print, you can just cut your carton in a way that includes them. When my panel was ready, I grabbed a pencil that would draw on the carton surface. An oily pencil will work for this, like a lithographic pencil or a chinograph pencil, or even an old eyeliner pencil, but you could also just use a sharpie or marker. This drawing is just a guide for when I'll make indentations in a minute with some sharp tools on the surface of the carton. As I mentioned earlier, dry point prints use the intaglio method of printing, which is where ink sits in the grooves on the surface of the plate and is transferred to your paper using the pressure or force from an etching press or a press made from a pasta machine. You can use any type of pointy tool you like to press into the surface to make indentations in your carton. I'm starting out here with a roulette tool. The roulette wheel is covered in little raised dots and I'm pushing this into the plate in areas that I want to print with a tone. All of the little dot indentations will collect ink and it will give the impression of shading when my image is printed. I'm using a tool from Artina where I can swap out different tool heads into the handle and it's got a couple of different roulette wheels in there that I'm using for my image. If you don't have any specific printmaking tools at home, don't worry, you can use any sharp or pointy object as your tool, like a nail or a ballpoint pen. If you can press it into the surface of the carton, you can use it as your tool. When I was finished with the roulette wheel, I swapped to a dry point nib for my line work. Here I'm going over the areas that I want outlined, and I'm also using the tool to do some hatching and cross hatching to reinforce the areas of shading that I made earlier with the roulette wheel. While I'm finishing up making my plate, it seems like a good time to remind you that I have a Patreon and you can go and support it. If you get some value out of what I make and can afford to buy me the equivalent of a pack of birthday cake candles each month, that would be amazing. My plan is to make weekly art tutorial videos this year which takes a lot of work and every little bit of support helps me make these videos better.
You'll need to prepare your paper before you start printing and with the method that I use, it's best to do it the night before you plan to print. The paper that you use for intaglio printing needs to be damp when you run it through the press so that it's more flexible and can be pushed into the grooves on your plate to collect the ink more easily. You'll need to use a type of art paper that can be soaked in water without falling apart. You'll want to look for something soft but strong and any paper that's suitable for etching will work. For these prints, I'm using some scraps of Zirkel 120 GSM etching and bookbinding paper, which I find works really well for this method. I started with some long strips of paper and I just made a pinch mark at the halfway point for my measurement and I'm tearing the paper in stacks in half and in half again and so on until the paper is the size that I need it to be. The next step is to wet the paper down and leave it to soak. I spray each piece of paper with water from a spray bottle, then I put them in a stack inside a plastic Ziploc bag overnight and the water soaks through the paper. If you don't have a spray bottle, you can just wipe each piece of paper with a dampened cloth and this works just as well. This method of soaking your paper doesn't use a lot of water and it's also a lot less messy than some of the traditional ways of preparing your paper and it's perfect if you don't have good access to running water in your workspace. As always, experiment with different brands, weights and colours of paper to see what you like working with. Keep in mind that with this type of printing you need to use the same kind of paper for your proofs and test prints that you're using for your final edition. If you substitute paper for your tests, you'll get different results. So you'll need to prepare yourself a few more pieces of paper than you think you need. I'm printing my dry point prints on an etching press using three blankets, with the thinnest blanket closest to the press bed and the thickest blanket closest to the top roller. For this type of printing you need to set your press fairly tightly. You probably don't have an etching press at home unless you're very, very lucky. If you want to print on a press, you might be able to use one in a local open access printmaking studio or a university, but if you don't have those type of facilities in your area, this type of dry point printing is absolutely perfect for printing with a past machine press. If you haven't already seen it, you can find a link to my video about making a press from a pasta machine in the description. One more thing I need for the printing process are some sheets of clean newsprint. I'm making a bleed print, which means my paper is smaller than my printing plate, so the newsprint stops the extra ink from transferring onto my blankets. When everything is set to go, you can start inking up your plate. You might need to experiment with your ink as you do your first few prints. Etching ink comes in a wide variety of viscosities. Some ink will be looser and some will be stiffer, and the different textures will work better for different kinds of prints. 
Here I have some Charbonnel F66 black ink, which is quite stiff and creamy. It didn't work super well for my image alone, so I mixed it using a paint knife with some very loose Charbonnel 55981 ink, and I got a texture that was perfect for what I needed. You can also modify your inks with different substances to adjust the texture, like linseed oil or magnesium carbonate powder. To get the ink onto your plate, you can pick it up off your slab with an eraser or a piece of screen printing squeegee, or a bit of stiff cardboard or an old plastic card, and you use this tool to wipe the ink across your image. The next step is to use a piece of bunched up tarlatan to wipe some of the ink off while also pushing it into the grooves on your plate. Tarlatan is a type of open weave cotton cheesecloth that's been stiffened with glue. When you've wiped off as much of the ink from the surface as you can with the tarlatan, you can polish it back even further with some pieces of paper torn out of an old phone book or a newspaper. Keep your hand flat when you do this as you just want to take that ink off the surface of the plate. How much ink you take off the plate will depend entirely on your image, and you'll need to experiment a bit with your first few prints just to figure out the best wiping method. I highly recommend wearing some thin disposable gloves when you're inking up, as it can be a pretty messy process. When you're ready to print, just put your plate face up on the bed of your press and put a piece of your dampened paper on top. If you can still see pools of water on the surface of your paper, blot this off gently with some newsprint first. The paper needs to be damp, but you don't want it to be visibly wet. Place the paper carefully onto your plate and put down a sheet of clean newsprint if you need to. Lay your press blankets over the whole lot and run it through the press. You only need to run it through your press in one direction. I'm just going back and forth in this video because I don't have a lot of room in my studio and it's easier for me this way. If you stack your prints as you make them, you can dry and flatten them in one go. To do this, put down a sheet of stiff cardboard, put a clean piece of newsprint on top, Lay out your prints, and when the first layer is full, put another piece of clean newsprint down. Put a second piece of cardboard down and repeat the process until you're done. When you're finished printing, weigh down the last piece of cardboard with a book or some light weights for a day or two, and when you unstack them, they'll be dry and flat. Cleaning up properly is very important, especially if you're using a shared or public studio space, but fortunately it's also pretty straightforward. I clean my press bed with a rag and some citrus based cleaner, then I go over it again with a dry paper towel. After I've cleaned the ink off my plate with the same rag and citrus cleaner, I scrape the excess ink off my slab with a paint scraper, and I wipe this on the scraps of phone book paper that I used earlier. I also clean excess ink off my tools carefully with the paint scraper, and then I collect all the rubbish together and wipe everything down with some citrus cleaner. I also got my desktop pretty messy this time around, so that got a full wipe down too. Vegetable oil will also work to clean the ink off your slab if you want to use that.
that's pretty much it. But if you want to add colour to your prints, you can do it in pretty much any way you want. You can use coloured pencils and watercolours work well. And today I'm colouring my dry point prints with some really vibrant drawing ink by Sennelier. I like to apply this with a Japanese ink brush. These are really inexpensive brushes, but they last a long time and they work really well for this type of thing. And that's it. That's how you can make a dry point print with an old recycled juice or milk carton. Please like, subscribe, share and leave a comment if you enjoyed this video. Please also comment with questions or suggestions for videos that you'd like me to make. All the materials that I used are listed in the description, along with links to my Patreon page, my website, my Facebook page, Instagram and some affiliate links to a couple of good art stores where you can buy materials. One more thing, if you're watching this video in January or February of 2020, don't forget that you've still got time to enter my art telephone challenge. I'll link that video and the entry form in the description as well. I've really enjoyed seeing all the entries so far and there's still plenty of time left for you to make something. Thanks for watching. Cheers.